here on the Giant FM Morning Show as uh, we're throwing everybody a curveball today, and yeah. we welcome Brian Johnson from Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Good morning. Good morning. I'm still trying to figure out what day it is. It, yes. Normally this yes. happens on Wednesday, it but does. I think today is Thursday. It, so. and that's what they tell me. That's what yeah. the calendar says. I guess says it's better to go that way because one of my favorite jokes is, how do you ruin a great Friday? Uh-huh. Realize it's Tuesday. And, yes. At least so, it's Thursday. So we're closer. If I'm feeling like it's Wednesday, tomorrow will be a bonus to uh, perfect. I like realize it. yes. it's Friday. It's the right. other way around. So. I like it. Optimism for the morning. Busy day yesterday for you, so we uh, day, yes. moved, moved yeah. you into today's slot. I appreciate and, uh, you hey, letting us move. So. No problem. Glad you could make it and tell us all about what's happening with the Community Foundation. I've got a little bit of variety of stuff to talk about. Variety is so a spicy variety life. is good. Um, <laughs> one thing I wanted to mention was we've been talking about the matching opportunity we have through Lilly Endowment. Um, funds that are our community funds. So funds that make grants out in the community. Um, Lily Endowment is offering us a matching opportunity. It's not one for one, it's two for one this time. Even better. So you give a dollar, Lily gives two dollars, that turns into three dollars for our community. So um, we appreciate everybody that's participated in that. We have the opportunity to receive $750,000 from Lily Endowment if we raise 375,000. I'm good with my math there. Yes. I may or may not have used a calculator <laughs> to figure that out, but. He um, did that off, off air. Yeah. yeah. Our $375,000 goal, we're already over $215,000 of that raise. So um, thank you to everybody who's participated in that. We have through the end of 2025. Oh, we got lots of time. Or when we meet our goal. Yeah. So we've got end of year coming up. Like to get a I'm not closer. sure how much will be left after the end of the year yes. or if it will even make it to the end of the year. So um, I know a lot of folks have said, hey, we're planning to do something again for this. And um, now is probably the time if you want to get those matching funds in that in that special fund. So um, but those make it possible for us to make grants. Um, Last year we had two hundred and sixty five thousand dollars in community fund grants. This year it will be over. 275,000 in community fund grants. So um, it's neat to see how that has grown and makes an impact in our community. We'll talk about one of those specific events that we've supported this year um, that's coming up this weekend. Brian, you talk about a lot of grants. Is there some grants that unfortunately maybe people don't know about that, that don't get utilized as much as they could? Sometimes. Um, that's not been a problem the last few years. That's good. Um, that means we're getting the word out. And it's been, it's kind of a balancing act. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, we always talk about we have this much in community fund grants. And for the last couple of years, I've said, you know, we're going to spend these monies. Um, I think we're fortunate in the fact that the community has really stepped up and helped out. Um, there's a significant difference between $265,000 and the $45,000 that we had to spend the first couple of years that I was involved <laughs> with the foundation. So I think we're fortunate in the fact that I don't know that we've really had to say no to any grants that we've awesome. really felt strongly about. There has been some timing and things right. like, well, we can adjust this and make this work. Um, but I kind of anticipate that changing this year. So it's great that we have this opportunity to be able to raise these extra dollars because we don't want to have to say no to any of these really great grants. So we do have some new, this year we started um, a pool of funds that are specifically for education. So the schools, each of our county schools um, has that opportunity to apply for school specific grants. It's a couple thousand dollars per school. So um, things like that take a little bit of time to get some publicity out. Um, something else that we've done the last couple of years are um, what we're calling micro grants. You know, we give some grants that are a few hundred dollars, and then we give some grants that are forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollar plus. Um, for us to ask an organization to do the same level of work and background reporting that an organization that's getting sixty thousand dollars versus an organization that may need five hundred dollars for a quick grant is not really doesn't make sense. Um, part of our goal is to make it easy for people to make an impact in the community. So um, those micro grants are literally a couple page application. Awesome. Tell us what the project is, tell us what you're going to do with it, and here are the funds. Um, so 
I think that's one of those that again is newer. We've had a few of those. Um, and we talk about these things and I don't I don't want people to feel like they have to be an expert and say, I'm gonna apply for a micro grant or I'm gonna apply for a community support grant that may be in that few thousand dollar range or I'm gonna apply for an impact grant. A lot of times it's just give us a call and say, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. Um, that's part of our role is to be able to say, okay, you know what? You're asking for a $500 grant for this event that's happening, fill out a micro grant. Um, or sometimes it's a call to us and we say, you know what, we've got a donor advised fund that's different than these community funds that may be interested in supporting these things. So I think um, we're there as a resource. So if you say, hey, I've got an idea for a project, give us a call. We may say, well, we want you to fill out a grant application. Or we may say, you know what, we've got a fund that can take care of that. So um, it it really varies a lot of times it's just to start a conversation right. with us and say we're thinking about doing this and then get you in the have. right direction yep so um so yes we're, we're very fortunate in the fact that we do have funds available but we also do have really great projects and organizations in our community that use those funds right. we don't want those funds just to be sitting there right. we want to want to make an impact in, in the community so it's, it's really awesome to see and our role really is connecting people, mm -hmm. connecting people who have the funds to give or have given in the past with folks that are doing these awesome projects. So it's, it's really great when we step back and look at our community and say, man, we've got some really awesome resources here, mm -hmm. whether that be people or funds or in most cases, both of those mm -hmm. things. So um, really great. So appreciate everybody that has given supporting these matching dollars and look forward to the grants that these dollars that are being given today will make in the future. Mm -hmm. So talking about giving, I know it's September. <laughs> it is. Although almost it is Thursday October. instead of Wednesday. Yeah, it's almost October. It's almost October. Um, one thing that a lot of people start thinking about this time of year is end of year giving. Um, and obviously it's easy to walk in and write out a check and say, I want it to go into this fund. and. The question that we get a lot of times are, which funds are matched? Mm. We can help you with that list of funds, or we have a lot of folks that have set up a named fund, specifically in honor or memory of somebody. A lot of families in our community have set up named family community funds, so when we give out these grants, we can say, these grants were made possible by this family fund. Um, but end of year giving, it can be that write out a check, but a lot of times if people say, well, you know what, I'm thinking about giving something to the foundation. A lot of times that conversation starts with, well, how do you want to do that? Because writing out a check or making a cash donation receives a tax deduction. But sometimes in the planning <coughs> process, um, there are other tools that can be even more beneficial for a donor. Um, we talk about tax planning. Um, and I always qualify this, say I am not a tax professional, so <laughs> please speak with your financial advisor, your tax professional, your accountant, um, about how these types of gifts would impact you on that individual level or a business level. Um, but a lot of times if we have something that's an appreciated asset, so think about I bought a stock and that stock has, is worth more than what I paid for it. Well, I can, I can sell that stock, pay the capital gains tax on it, and give it to the foundation or a charity, and everybody's going to be grateful. Or I could take that stock that's appreciated, donate it directly to a charity like the foundation, and still make that gift, but I don't have to pay capital gains tax on it. So it's a really a win-win, and a lot of times people can really increase the amount of the gift value without increasing the amount that they spent on it, if that makes sense. I had a donor a few years ago say, well, this stock that I gave you has appreciated 105% from when I bought it. Wow. So you think about the amount of capital gains tax they would have had to pay on that, and it's, it's really a great tool for folks to make a gift and not pay capital gains tax and still have a um, a tax break yeah. 
on that. Um, sometimes folks, if, if you've done your planning, may affect your tax bracket, things like that. Um, we always talk about voluntary and involuntary giving. I can choose to give to charity. I can't choose whether I pay my taxes or not. <laughs> Um, I, I believe the IRS would have something to say if I yeah, say, yeah, I'd say. rather not pay my taxes yeah. this year. So I'm going to pass on that. Yeah, so, um, so a lot of times these types of gifts can actually help with tax burdens as well. And you can, the voluntary giving side of that is I can give to something here locally that I see every day and makes an impact. So um, now is the time to be thinking about that if you haven't thought about that end of year tax planning. Um, another significant tool that we see with, I would consider this planning, but um, IRA charitable rollovers. Um, that's been something that's been really popular, um, and it is an um, opportunity for individuals that have a traditional IRA, and throughout the year they have what's called a required minimum distribution. So they'll say, Randy, every year you need to take XYZ amount of dollars out of this as income. Um, a lot of times folks say, you know what, we don't necessarily need that income. Often it impacts people in a negative way tax bracket wise or income planning. Um, and if somebody says, you know what, I'd rather give this to charity, um, there are ways um, that they can actually direct that directly to a charity, kind of like we talked about appreciated assets. You know what, I don't need that income. I'm going to make a gift to charity, so I'm going to make this out of my IRA and give it directly to the charity. I can often say this doesn't count as income now. It checks the box for my required minimum distribution, and I can make a big impact locally with that. So. Um, that's been a very popular thing um, lately that we've seen. There are some requirements on that. Um, folks need to be either 70 and a half or 72. I say that because some of those laws changed yeah. recently as far as um, when I have to start taking that required minimum distribution. And there is a cap of up to $100,000 in a calendar year for that. So, But if, if you have an IRA and you say, you know what? I'm being told I need to take this distribution, but I don't need it for my income and I want to give to charity. This is a great tool for somebody that fits those qualifications to fulfill all of those things at once. So I always say, so kind of like we talked about with grants, if somebody says, hey, you know what, I may want to make a contribution, but I'm not sure the best way to do that, give us a call and we can talk through that and also like I like I said talk with your tax planner your financial planner um, your accountant your investment advisor and say you know what I'm thinking about doing this and how is this going to affect me tax wise and what can I afford to do so some really great great things so you did say it's almost October it is so that means three months left before the end of the year start thinking start thinking <laughs> so um, so anyway great opportunities yeah. there. So, well, we talked a little bit about our community funds that make grants. How about if we talk about one that we made a grant to already? Yes. There's a big thing happening this weekend. A big one. Here. I, I pulled this flyer up to the microphone, but I think something gets lost in the translation. I think it does. Seeing yeah. it, but Kiwana Fall Festival. Can we say as heard on WROI? There you go. Yes, not as seen on um, TV. Yeah. Yes, yes. Well, we can say as, as seen, seen on, on TV RTC once. TV four. once yeah. Dakota gets us back on them. So sorry for those folks that are watching this after the fact. <laughs> if you didn't go to the Kiwana Fall Festival, you missed out on a really awesome <laughs> time. Um, but things start happening this evening um, and go all the way through the weekend. So I have this, it's a. It's not a three panel brochure because it wouldn't no. fit in three panels. It's four panels it's of big. activities. So Lots of activities. Kind of looking through this, but the Kiwana Fall Festival starts this weekend. It actually starts tonight with some entertainment. Um, carnival rides, bands, um, we were talking about this earlier, a new act that has not been there before is the Flippin' Out Trampoline Act. Sounds, that sounds entertaining. I'm guessing it's probably going to be a little bit more complicated than me just bouncing on my trampoline at home. Um, I'm, yeah, I'm guessing they're going to bounce a few, little higher yeah. and do a little flips. In they're probably there. slightly more athletic than myself. Uh, or bouncing probably on any trampoline. of us in the studio so, right now. <laughs> um, but things like that. Um, just looking through at things like a cornhole tournament 
singing ventriloquist. That would be interesting. That would be good. Um, pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. Some bands. I'm looking through here. Some familiar names like the Night Shift Band. Been around the community. Some really awesome music. Malachi um, Jaggers. I hear that he's, yeah. he's on the list here. Um, and a bunch of different things. Adam Gundrum is another Adam's name that has been in the community. Some really great music. Um, a circus. Circus. Free circus. circus. Free circus. Well, and that's I'm looking through this list, and there's all these things that say free on it. They do. So I can go and have a good time at this festival. Um, and save whether your money, I have save money, your money for food. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's it's been really great to we've been able to grant to this on a fairly regular basis over the past few years, and and that's really one of the things that the organizers of this festival work is to make it so that people of any economic. Mm -hmm. um, situation can go and have an awesome time at this festival um, whether they participate in the circus watch these acts um, insects dr insecta dr insecta okay so even if you're not interested in insects i've seen this presentation and he always brings something a little bit different um, and he makes insects interesting there's some science things magicians things like that. Um, it's really neat to see all the things that are happening. If you if you are athletic, there's a 5K race on Saturday morning you can be a part of. Um, then have biscuits and gravy oh, after yeah. that. Probably shouldn't have your biscuits and gravy Don't before you run the race no, because that may create some issues. I'm not necessarily a runner, but <laughs> I know enough to wait until yes. after to have my biscuits and gravy. But um, some great food. Um, I always like anything with an engine on it. So mm -hmm. Sunday there's a car show, um, garden tractor pulls, all these awesome entertainments. Our family loves to go over and just hang out. And then, of course, the headline act is the parade on Saturday. It is. Always going honoring the hometown heroes. Um, this year it's farmers. This year it's farmers. We wouldn't be yeah. where we are as a community without farmers. And that's um, pretty awesome to see um, that whole concept um, thinking back over the years Tom Mate was instrumental mm -hmm. of course we lost Tom a few years ago but um, he would always come in and say I want kids to see that heroes aren't people on TV yeah. but they're the people around them in their lives that make things happen and I would I would list Tom as one of those heroes in our community um, from the aspect of somebody that was a retired firefighter mm -hmm. um, that literally saved lives, but then he came to Kiwana and made it him and his family's home and started something awesome here yeah. with the Fall Festival. So if you're looking for something to do tonight or tomorrow or Saturday or Sunday, and Correct me if out. I'm wrong, wasn't this originally just like a one, two day event? It was, now it's, it's and, and this, this has <laughs> been going, it's, it's really been going on in the community yeah. for probably 40, 50 years, but yeah. Um, has really grown over the last few years, and it's just um, amazing to watch it. Yeah, grow. and uh, give a quick shout out to Ashley Van Lake. Yes. She's picked up where Tom um, left off, yep. and has done an awesome job with this. So, Ashley, if you're listening, thank you for being one of those people that step up and say we can continue this tradition. Right. So, doing a great if, job. If you need something to do check out the flyers like i said i'll hold it up to the mic but that doesn't yeah. do a whole lot of good and um, we've got some of those flyers at our office and i've been hearing you giving away tickets mm -hmm. and rides and rides um, from kids we talk about free things um, something that tom started the last couple of years he was involved in it's continued under ashley's leadership is um, free food for kids mm -hmm. So there are a list of different vendors that are providing things so a family can not only go and enjoy this entertainment, but um, kids 16 and under, there are times where they can get food and, and make it a family environment so it's affordable for everybody. Awesome. So really awesome thing. So we've been able to grant over the past few years. This year, um, we've been able to grant to help with the festival itself, but also some upgrades. So when you bring in food vendors, <laughs> um, if you're listening and you've never been there and I tell you that 
there will probably be five to ten to fifteen thousand people in the town of Kiwana this weekend. He's not lying. <laughs> Go and see if I'm wrong. Yeah. Um, see if you can count that. High. But um, they've been able to make some improvements throughout the community, things at the park to not only help with the festival, but help with things that happen throughout the year. So it's really neat to see how this has not only benefited the festival, but benefited the town and community of Kiwana over the year. So uh, check out the Kiwana Fall Festival and see if it's yeah. as great as we talked yeah. about. And um, so it's something to look forward to. But this year we were able to provide $7,500 from our community funds to make grants to help support needs in Kiwana. So, um, the other thing that I wanted to talk about was Fulton County Women's Giving Circle. Yes. I'm not qualified to be part of that. Me either. They let me hang out. It's That's a pretty nice cool level. event. Um, but um, that is coming up on Tuesday. Tuesday? Tuesday, 6 p.m. at the Times Theater. What a great place to go. A great place to get. And you know what even makes it greater is that the last few years we've had video grant applications. Mm. So what better place to watch a video grant <laughs> application than on the big screen right. in the theater. We'll have food. Can't go wrong with I think food. we may have popcorn. You go to a theater, yeah, you smell yeah, popcorn. popcorn. Yeah. Um, some fun things like that. But this year the event happens at 6 p.m. on Tuesday, which is October 1st, mm -hmm. um, at the Times Theater. Um, Thank you to all the ladies who are members of this organization. Their membership dues and the monies that they built in their endowment fund make $10,000 in grants possible this year. Um, those membership dues, if somebody's listening and says, oh, I need to pay those membership dues, you can do that online. You can bring it the night of. Um, we send out a few reminders, but um, the members make these grants possible. That $120 a year turns into um, monies that are granted out and in the endowment fund to make a long-term impact. So uh, we have finalists. So I'll just read through the list of finalists. Drum roll please. Drum roll please. So if these are of interest, if there are women out there listening and say, I need to pay my dues, or if you've already paid your dues and can't make it, let us know. We'll send you the video links for this. If you've paid your dues and you're planning to come, come prepared to vote for some of these pretty cool yeah. videos um, and organizations. But the finalists, um, Nickel Plate Trail, mm -hmm. a really neat organization. Um, you know, when you're on the trail, sometimes you have to use the restroom. Yes. It's not necessarily that exciting of a project, is the way they describe it in their video, but it is a necessity. Yeah. So. Um, they're looking for some support to add some amenities along the trail. Cool. So looking forward to that. That's a pretty cool thing that yeah. that comes into Rochester. Um, Grace Momco, again, we're not qualified to fit this, no. but a great fit for a women's giving circle organization. Um, in the past, folks may be familiar with the name MOPS. Um, they've changed it to Momco so that it expands really the reach and it's kind of a support group for moms. Um, they meet on a monthly basis, um, have speakers, topics come in, um, education resources for moms, but also kind of that group of support. Mm -hmm. um, I can collaborate with other moms that, you know what, I may not know how to do this, but somebody else in my group may know. <laughs> so a really great organization. So they are finalists. Fulton County Parks. We've seen a lot of new parks. Um, something that's happened recently out at Richland Restoration Nature Park. People are listening and don't know where that is. Think about between Old 31 and New 31, there's an old, I, I said I wouldn't say an old landfill, but it is. to talk about the dramatic change, it's an old landfill that's been turned into a county park, has some amenities, um, a dog park, um, some walking trails, um, some new walking trails. If you haven't been out there recently, you go out there and you see all these posts around. Um, and they've added some new walking trails. It's really a cool place to take a walk. Um, when you have grass walking trails, you need some maintenance equipment for that. So um, they've asked for some of that support to be able to help with um, maintain those trails and keep them nice for those of us that enjoy using the park. Um, the Rochester Junior Senior High Band. Ooh. 
been really active lately. Yes. Um, what do you need to have a band other than students? Equipment. Equipment. Instruments. Instruments, yes. Um, so if you're listening and you have extra in, extra band instruments that you're not using, you say, you know what, I'm never going to pick up my <laughs> saxophone again, um, but I'd like to see somebody use it. They're accepting donations for those, but they do have some instruments that need some repairs or um, replacements and so that students can have this opportunity to experience. Instruments are not cheap. No. I don't know if you've looked at the prices of them recently, but um, there's a lot of times where, you know what, a family can't afford to buy an instrument and you need an instrument to be able to participate in band. So it's been great to see some enthusiasm for this program. So a little plug, if you, if you have an instrument that you're not using and you want to donate, um, reach out to the um, junior high or senior high and say, hey, I've got an instrument you can use, um, but these grants will be used to help with repairing some of the instruments that they have right now and are not in condition that the kids can use them so that those can be available yeah. for those students that say, you know what, I want to try this. Cool. Um, and then another organization that's familiar to our community, United Ministries, um, they do an outreach program that helps families that have a short-term financial need. Um, it's been interesting as we listen to organizations over the last couple of years, um, a common thread with food pantries and short-term assistance programs are we're seeing new families that we've not seen before. And a lot of times they are families where a couple parents in the family and kids, um, parents are working a job or two, um, but just financially aren't able to keep up with the expenses. And so um, this United Ministries helps these families out. It's pretty awesome to see the number of families that they're able to help out. So those are the five finalists. Cool. $10,000 will be split between those. Everybody will walk out of the door with some money that evening. Um, it's up to the members' votes on where those applications rank in that. And um, it's great to see the support that we're able to, support, to provide for things like recreation activities or enrichment activities like music or support groups, or support for people in short-term needs. So if there are women listening that want to be a part of this group, it's not too late. You can check us out. Um, we have a Women's Giving Circle page on our website, nicf.org. Um, you can actually pay your dues there, or if you say, hey, I can show up on Tuesday night, 6 p.m., Times Theater. I want to be a part of this group, make, a, make an impact in this. Um, we'd love to have you join us. If you're a member and you've already paid your dues, encourage a friend to come along. Yeah. Let's check out what the group does. Um, it's, it's a pretty awesome time and we'll have fun at the theater. The theater is um, one that this group has helped grant to in the past and it's really neat to see in person the impact of those grants that we've made. So, Women's Giving Circle, October 1st, 6 p.m. Make sure you're there. Be there. Be there and vote. Looking forward to it. Yes. So, all right. Well, we've talked about a lot of things. Um, we talked about matching dollars into your gifts. If somebody's interested in that, reach out to us. Um, Kiwana Fall Festival. Check it out. It'll be a fun time. Um, but if you're interested in anything we talked about today, you can check us out online, nicf.org. Um, you can find us on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation. Um, you can give us a call. Phones work. Yes, they still work. 574-224-3223. Or stop by our office at 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester. We'd love to talk to you about any ideas that you have for making Fulton County a better place to live, work, and play. Brian, thanks for coming in. And that's some great information there. And hopefully uh, uh, draws up some uh, business for you. We're looking forward <laughs> to it. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Brian Johnson with the Northern Indiana Community Foundation here on the show.